Connie Clausen, take one. And three, two, one. Hey, Eric Bo here, America's Best Crime Writer. We're here in our Sunshine Room studios today, here in beautiful suburban Fulcroft. I was so lucky to meet Connie Clausen. But before I get into that, let's take a look at 30 seconds of a parade of elephants at the Ringling Brothers Circus. That parade's from 2013. Let's go way back to 1942. I almost said 1492. Uh, a year before I was born, by the way, John Ringling North approached 19-year-old Connie Clausen, and he told Connie that her long hair made her perfect for the part of Alice in Wonderland in that season's grand finale of a circus. Connie accepted the offer, and she became part of the circus for years as an acrobat and an elephant girl. Later, Connie got into acting. Here's a couple of glamour shots. And she became a spokesperson for Beechnut, Coca-Cola, and Westinghouse TV commercials. Here's a Westinghouse commercial from 1956. There's big news behind the door, too. This 1956 Westinghouse is called a stoop saver, because see, all the foods you use the most are up top here, right on level with you. Now, the giant roll-out freezer is right below. There, isn't that handy? And over here is the wonderful new Westinghouse Showcase Crisper. It tilts down and opens like this, and even lifts out for easy loading and cleaning. All new inside, all new outside. And your local Westinghouse dealer has it right now. Now, I didn't meet Connie until 1990. She was 67, I was 47, and an aspiring author hoping to get his first book published. In that year, 1990, I was relocating from St. Croix to Hollywood. I was going to be a screenwriter, or an actor, or both. But on the way there, I stopped to visit my mom, right here in beautiful suburban Fallcroft. America's Most Wanted had just captured Bobby Noss. My mother saved all the newspaper clippings. She said, son, here's your first book. Now keep in mind, no internet back then, no cell phones. You had to make your first contact through the mail. I sent letters to 20 publishers, thinking they'd be fighting over each other to buy the rights of the book. Wrong. All 20 turned me down. Said I needed an agent. So, I sent letters to 20 agents. Four turned me down. They didn't deal with crime. Fifteen said they'd be interested, but need to see my proposal. I understand that. And one agent called me, Connie. She said she'd wanted to do a book about outlaw motorcycle gangs for two years. She wanted to do my book. How soon can we get together? I was on the train to New York City the next day. Connie lived on Fifth Avenue, right across the street from Central Park, one of those elegant buildings, way up high. She was a big-time agent, and I had no idea. We bonded right off the bat. I signed a contract that day. She taught me how to write a proposal, and on the way out the door, she gave me a book. She said, give this to your mother. It'll be coming out mm, another month or so. The book was Sex in the City. Just like that, Connie was my agent. And she set up a book auction. She gave eight publishers two weeks to bid on the book. Twelve days passed. On the 13th day, I went out for a run. When I got home, my mother was very excited. Call Connie, call Connie. And I did. Warner Books made a preemptory bid, but it was take it or leave it. I asked Connie, what should I do? She said, they're the biggest publishers in the world, and they're offering more than anyone else will tomorrow. Take the offer. And that's how and when Born to be Wild was born. 
Connie put a few deals together for me, but she passed away in 1997 at the age of 74. She'd hosted a few get-togethers over the years with other writers and people in the publishing industry, which I attended. She's a great person, and like I said, I was so lucky to meet her. Thanks for tuning in today. Hope to see you here often. That's it for now. Until next time. Mm -hmm. See you. And that's a wrap.